Married women who have cheated. What did the other person involved do that seduced you to the point of cheating? Listen to me. He cared and showed kindness and respect. He saw my soul. Auto fellatio. I hated my husband. A friend showed kindness and respect. Like someone said here. Something that my ex-husband didn't because H was having sex with his assistant and colleagues while I was stupidly in love in him. Believing everything he said. When I found out that my concerns were true. I tried to fix my marriage but since that didn't work. I started sleeping with this friend every time that I discovered a lie like him going out of state to see my mom in reality he was out of state watching a play with his mistress in the other side of the country from his mom. Thank you Instagram for getting me out of that marriage. What's something you didn't like about yourself as a teenager that you're at peace with as an adult? I didn't quite fit in anywhere. At least not perfectly or completely. Thinking back, I wasn't widely popular by any means. But in individual classrooms, I was known to be funny. This meant I talked to a lot of people but most were incredibly shallow. Surface level friendships. Now, my wide interests and eclectic personality has allowed me to befriend all kinds of people and the people I consider my friends today are the best I've ever had. Only thing I still don't like about it though is that I've never had a friend group lol like only two of my friends have met each other. And most but not all have met my parents. But none on an intimate level. When I was about 17 or 18 I was obsessed with appearing intelligent or open-minded. To the point where I took on opinions or ideas purely in other to seem intelligent to others. The irony being that I probably came across an absolute moron to others. When I look back on it, I cringe. But at the same time I'm a lot more secure in myself now when it comes to that. When I don't know something I see it as an opportunity to learn more. And when I'm wrong I own up to it. It's okay not to know things. It's not okay to pretend you do rather than actually learning. I turned into a bit of a gym rat when I was 16. I had a constant nagging feeling of not being big enough. I quit the gym half a year later due to COVID. Got a physical labor job. Grew bigger than it ever been, mostly due to me being awake long enough to get enough calories in to grow. Then I took a gap year where which I spent building a table by hand from firewood. Which got me even bigger. Nowadays I'm a bit more of a relaxed body and feel very confident in how I look. Pondering going back to the gym sometime to throw some weight around though. Was always a lot of fun. What is one thing everyone should incorporate to have a healthier lifestyle? Drink water. Then drink some more. Don't focus so much on what you can't do working out wise. Focus on what you can do. I have bad feet. I can't run. But there's other machines I can use. It's not hopeless. Ask gym managers for suggestions. It can be done. More walks and less sugary foods. I haven't eaten potato chips in 4 weeks and I still gained weight. But I keep forgetting that I eat marshmallow cakes or chocolate at night when I'm sad. I hate the fact I never listen to my dietitian. One thing that everyone should incorporate into their lifestyle to improve their health is regular physical activity. Regular exercise has numerous benefits for the body and mind. Including reducing the risk of chronic diseases such as obesity heart disease, and type 2 diabetes, as well as improving mental health and mood. It is recommended that adults get at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity each week, as well as muscle strengthening activities at least two days a week. It's important to find an activity that you enjoy so that it is easier to stick with it. Minding your own damn business. It's not for you to know about other people's health, habits, relationships, economics, family, lifestyle or time management. You don't need to form an opinion on your fat co-worker's lunch. How the pretty blonde from the other office can suddenly afford those shoes when she said she was broke. Or what Ben from accounts does in his day-to-day -day life that makes him 10 meters late every day. Be lazy. Stop caring. Scrutinizing other people's lives and being judgy about it will never end up in you feeling better. Use your time and energy on things that have tangible benefit to you. If you're a retail therapy type of girl, what's something you buy when you're sad? Solutions. I won't buy it if it has no practical purpose so something is getting solved that day. It could be anything from a clothing item that completes an outfit to organization stuff for the apartment. Lately it's been hobby stuff. Only rule is it has to be something that's been on my mind for at least a few weeks. I wish I could say this makes me more responsible and sensible with my money but nope. This is still an emotionally driven purchase. New gel polish colors. I have started painting my nails over the past 6 months with gels and have gotten halfway decent at it and also now swear by gels. And cute dresses slash outfits. I am a broke college student so I need to be careful. But also taking 6 to 7 classes slash semester means I need to treat myself occasionally. Self-care products or food. I generally stick to a budget these days. So it's almost always something I need or would have bought anyways. But maybe not purchased right that moment. It typically looks like a nicer face mask. A fancy chocolate. Or something of small luxury without breaking the bank. Something that would have an immediate pick-me-up with no buyer's remorse. Something small. Pretty hand soap. A face mask. A $5 dress. I shop if I'm happy. Sad. Depressed. Tired. It's my cardio. My love language and a social thing. I like to walk around a TJ Maxx type store and browse. I love the randomness of the products. I've also walked around a store for a while. Picked things up. Put them down and left with nothing. 
The mindless wandering is what calms me. People who take 20 to 30 minutes to shit. What are y'all doing in there? Playing with my phone and just taking a break from being a parent for 20 minutes. If you must know, my butthole opens up like a Venus flight wrap when the poop goes through and doesn't pop shut again. Takes a while. I don't want to pull my undies up and deal with that hell spawn. So I take my time. Push out any last remnants. And clean up when my body has returned to normal. It's like a 10 to 12 minute process instead of my wife's like. 60 to 90 seconds. Earlier in life I wouldn't poop often enough. Pushed out big honkers and it's been about a year and a half since I put myself in a strict as soon as you feel it. Do your thing and my pucker hole still takes a few to spring back to a normal shape. TBH. I was unknowingly suffering colon cancer. Couldn't push without discomfort. Knew there was business to be done. Didn't imagine I should be seeking medical advice. It was stage 4 before I did seek medical advice. 4 lots of chemo and 2 surgeries later. I'm still not free of the metastases. If you know someone spending a lot of time on the toilet. Or R1. Consider checking with a GP if you're not just there for the shits and giggles, pun intended. It could save your life. I could shit in 5 minutes. But then I'd need to shit again after a couple hours. My body just works that way. Or I can just sit there for 15 minutes and be good for many hours longer. Like 6 or 7. I'd sacrifice 10 extra minutes to get a few extra hours uninterrupted most times. Making sure it all comes out. Sometimes after you shit the first time. You fart and you can never know if it's just gas or some diarrhea. You gotta make sure everything is out of your system. And sometimes it takes that long. Everyone's bowels are different.